Scoring goals is said to be the hardest thing in football and at the end of the day that's why strikers are paid the big bucks. But who have been the top 10 most wasteful strikers in the league this season? In today's video we're going to find out. So I've gone ahead and crunched the XG numbers. I've got every championship strikers XG so far this season and minus the goals that they've scored to give us an overall XG underperformance and I've figured out the top 10 strikers who are most guilty of underperforming their XG this season. So for the sake of today's video we're not going to be including any midfielders or defenders that have underperformed their XG and there are some pretty big names which make it into the top 10 here. If you're going to enjoy and you'd like to see any other top 10s then do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content but without any further ado let's hop into the video. Starting out in 10th place we have Stoke City's Jacob Brown with an XG underperformance of 1.8 goals this season. Now plenty of Stoke's forwards have been guilty of underperforming their XG this season and we may even see another Stoke player popping up on the list later on but Brown's been one of their players, one of the many players to have suffered from not living up to the expectations which they probably set for themselves in previous years gone by last season for example he hit 13 goals in the championship but hasn't looked anywhere near that prolific this time around, scoring just 3 up until this point in the season. Missing big chances has been a staple of pretty much every Stoke forward so far this season and Brown's been no exception to that. In ninth place we have Sheffield United's Rian Brewster. The Blades may be flying high in the championship right now but Brewster has once again found this season goals pretty hard to come by. The striker has been out with an injury since October but even when he does get back to full fitness I think he'll find it pretty tough to get back into that starting 11 on a weekly basis. He's had an XG underperformance of 1.9 goals this season. He's only scored one goal in the championship up until this point. And I'd be interested to hear from some Blades fans what you do with Brewster. If you are to be promoted to the Premier League, if all goes to plan for the second half of this season, is that the point where you then go ahead and cut ties with him or do you give him that another chance in the Premier League? Have you seen enough of him where you still think it's worth persisting with his development? Things haven't quite clicked for him in a Blades shirt as a lot of Sheffield United fans would have been hoping for considering how much money they spent on him to go ahead and get him out of Liverpool. This season's been another real frustrating one for him in front of goal. In 8th place we have Preston North End striker Troy Parrott currently on loan from Spurs. At the start of the season especially Especially, he was incredibly guilty of missing a lot of guilt edge chances. He's also underperformed his XG by 1.9 goals this season. Has missed the bulk of the season through injury, but is now getting himself back up and into the first team. Was on the bench in our most recent match against Norwich, the only team coincidentally who he scored against this season, just hitting the back of the net once in the championship. Parrot is clearly a good player and is very good at linking the play, dropping his shoulder and dropping into midfield and linking up with others but when it comes to natural finishing ability and how he strikes the ball his overall game just doesn't quite seem to be at that level yet. Fellow Preston North End striker Ben Woodburn is next up on the list in 7th place with also an XG underperformance of 1.9 goals this season. Goals have been pretty hard to come by for North End in general but for our strike force barring Chet Evans and Emil Reese, it's been next to nothing for these guys. Woodburn himself has only hit the back of the net once in the championship that being against Blackburn Rovers and particularly over his last last few matches has been guilty of squandering some quite good opportunities. He does have the ability to drop a shoulder and go past a man but when it comes to that natural striking ability just doesn't quite seem to be there. In 6th place we have former Millwall striker Benick Afobe with an XG underperformance of 2.1 goals this season. Given the drop off in performances that Millwall fans have seen from Afobe this season I don't think they'll be all too fussed that he's gone ahead and moved on in the January window. Ultimately Millwall's goals have mostly come from Zian Fleming, Tom Bradshaw and Charlie Cresswell this season and Afobe just hasn't come anywhere close to reaching the standards that he set for himself last season when he scored 12 league goals. The striker scored just two goals in 918 championship minutes this season and overall was a pretty disappointing end to his spell at the Den. In at the midway point we have West Brom's Carl and Grant with an XG underperformance of 2.2 goals this season. A penalty miss won't help his cause in terms of his overall XG underperformance for the year. But Grant's been a player who really hasn't 
kicked on at the Hawthorns in the way in which I thought he would have over these last couple of years. He had that quite difficult first spell with them in the Premier League, but I thought coming back down to the Championship, a division where he'd already gone ahead and smashed with Huddersfield previously, would be the breeding ground to score plenty of goals for him. But it's just not happened for him in a West Brom shirt, particularly this season where he's only scored three goals despite accumulating an XG of 5.2 in the league this season. With Daryl DK back in the frame and fully available now, I think that Corbran has more reliable forwards to often rely upon week in, week out. And if Grant wants to get his place back in that starting 11 consistently, he's going to have to start providing the goods on a more regular basis. In fourth place, we have Stoke City's Dwight Gale, the second Stoke player to make an appearance on today's list. The second Stoke player who's been incredibly wasteful in front of goal this season. Now, to be fair to Gale, if offside goals counted, he'd probably be in the golden boot race for this season. But as they don't, he's got an overall XG underperformance of 2.3 goals this season. And he's actually the only striker that makes it onto today's list that hasn't actually hit the back of the net in the championship so far this season. There was a real buzz around Stoke when they got this deal over the line in the summer. Stoke fans thought they were getting the Dwight Gale, who's got one of the best goals to minutes ratio in championship history. And in the end, they've got a Gale who's now 33 years old and just doesn't look as sharp in front of goal as he previously did. In third place, we have Millwall's Andreas Volkschlammer, who's had an overall XG underperformance of 2.3 goals this season, not been amazingly efficient in front of goal. He's actually only got one goal to show from his overall XG of 3.3 in the league so far this season. Now he's not been played as an out and out number 9 like a lot of the other players have on today's video. He's been played in a more uh, wide role under Gary Rowett this season. And to be fair his record at Union Berlin, his previous club where Millwall picked him up from wasn't exactly prolific. He only scored 2 goals in 32 Bundesliga appearances last season and while his record in the second German division was always quite promising in. He's not really been able to deliver anything close to those figures in the championship this season with just one goal so far. In second place, we have Swansea City's Joel Perot. He scored more goals than any other striker on today's list, but has still been guilty of underperforming his XG by 2.8 goals in the championship this season. Overall, he scored nine goals and has been finding a flow of form in the championship recently across all comps. He's got five goals in his last six matches for Swansea, but has had several patches throughout the season where he's really hit a bit of a barren spell in terms of his overall output, which has had quite a dramatic reduction from the point of which we saw Pro operating it last season. Capable of playing as either an out-and-out -out number nine or that next player off the striker. Last season, he was brilliant going off either feet scoring from unlikely angles and absolutely rocketing them in. And while we have seen a little bit of a return to form in recent weeks, I don't think he's really come close to hitting the levels consistently that he was showcasing last season. And that overall XG underperformance of 2.8 goals this season would back that up too. But claiming the number one spot and by far and away as the worst finisher in the championship this season, we've got QPR's Lyndon Dykes with an XG underperformance of 4.4 goals this season, which is absolutely huge compared to everyone else on today's list. Now, Dykes has hit the back of the net six times so far this season, but going off the XG he's accumulated, he should have scored at least 10.4 goals. Now, the thing with Dykes is that he does have his redeeming factors. He can be a real nuisance to opposition centre-halves. He can bring other players into play with his hold-up play and can be really physical. But when it comes to being... a uh, presence in and around the box and being that clinical finisher when a decent chance gets rolled to you, Dykes just isn't that guy. And this speaks to the fact of which and this speaks to the fact of why QPR were so desperate to add another forward in the January window. In the end, they've got that deal over the line for Jamal Lowe for the remainder of the season. And that's because they do tend to create decent chances, but they've just not had that consistent striker to stick them away this season. But guys, there we have it. Those have been the worst 10 finishes in the championship this season, going off the XG numbers. If you'd like to see any other statistical top 10s, do leave your comments down below and do show your support on today's video apart from that guys thank you very much for tuning in and i'll see you all in the next one